Hey everybody, this is Paul with Scarlet Amps, and I uh, had something happen today, which was really weird, uh, and it led me to do a little video about uh, how do tubes work. So here goes nothing. I know this isn't going to be comprehensive by any means. This is for the average guitar player, or you know, just want a basic understanding of what is even happening in a tube. There's so much more to learn. But this is a basic primer of what what is happening inside a tube and uh, sort of what do some of these terms that you may hear when people start nerding out about tubes, what in the hell are they talking about? This is a, de a rectifier tube, a 5AR4. This is a dual diode tube, meaning there's two diodes inside of this tube. This is the drawing basically representing what a tube diode is, or even a regular diode, but this is how we draw it in tube land. And what happens is I'm not drawing in the heaters, but there's a heater inside of the tube. That's what you see glowing when you turn your amp on. See some little orange glow? That's the heaters. And the heater, this bottom part right here, is the cathode. It is negative. Cathode. And this other part here is known as the anode, or commonly called the plate. And that is because in a tube, you see this big old, this big old part you see on the outside that basically just looks like plates. Big plate of metal. That's the plate. That's the positive part. So what happens in a diode tube is you, your five volt, high voltage from your power transformer is connected to the anode and when the cathode gets hot enough it starts to sort of shoot out electrons they just shoot across here and they go and they flow there's current flow between there now what comes out on this side is DC not the sine wave of AC it's just a straight line of DC all right so what's happening there is the AC is just flowing straight across there, just basically uncontrolled, and coming out as a DC voltage over here. Usually, this is this is like I'm not going to do the math, but if this is like 300 volts, and this would be uh, 1.4. This would be like about 340 volts, something like that. All right. Now why? Now, how do you use that to amplify something? Well, you don't. You just This just turns it into DC. If you want to amplify something, you need a triode. And the triode adds another part to the mix. In a diode, you only have two parts. Di, two. D-I-O-D-E, diode. You got the plate and the negative. Two parts. Two moving, not moving, but two uh, electrical parts. Not counting the heater. You never count the heater. In a triode, you have a third part, and it's the control grid, okay? So basically the same thing. You got a high voltage, this time of DC, waiting on your anode, and you got your cathode is real hot because of the heater, and it starts shooting out electrons, all right? Well, I mean, shooting them all over the place, but now you've got this third part, the control grid, and you put your signal on it. What does that do? Well, the more positive this is, the more electrons will flow from the cathode to the anode, and more current will flow. The less positive it is, or the more negative it is, uh, you don't really want it to go all the way negative, but that's more, more technical than you need to know. The less, basically, no current will be flowing, so no signal. Grid is very negative because this is tied to a more negative voltage than either of these. But you use this to control your signal. So you can use a signal. What happens is you've got a high voltage here. It's pulling current. So it's pulling current across the resistor. You're going to have a voltage drop and blah, blah, blah. You use that to uh, kind of scrape your signal off that, block off the DC, and you have another AC signal, which is just like this, 
only bigger. And that's how a triode works. So what I had happen to me today that what made this made me want to make this video is I stuck this 12AU7 in my tester and pushed the button and it catastrophically lost its vacuum. You see how that's all white? And this happened. The glass just shattered and lost its vacuum. And obviously this too is not very good. So let's see what's inside of it. Now, you see those two Kind of hard to see. We got my camera to focus. Focus, please. You got two. Those are two diodes. Actually, two triodes. I'm sorry. A 12AU7, a 12AX7, 12AT7, and some others are dual triode tubes. There's two triodes in each glass envelope. This is the glass envelope. Each one of these is separate and you can do separate things with them or you can tie them together and do the same thing. So what we've got here, let's see if we can take it apart. This little deal here is called the getter. What it does is collect stray gases. It's got, it, they cover it with some kind of crud and when they fire the getter in the factory that's what gives this little silver coating you see that shiny silver coating that silver coating absorbs all the rest of the gas that didn't get pumped out during the vacuum pumping process and when you see a tube that's white like this you know it's lost its vacuum so let's get rid of the getter we don't need him he's not a, he's not an electrical part of the deal here See if we can clip out all this stuff here. Clip you out. Okay, I'm trying not to get glass in my fingers. A lot of glass. All right, these little top pieces, those are made out of mica. And amazingly enough, they're known as the top and bottom mica. So let's take the mica off. So we can get one of the diodes apart here. All right, the mica is a support structure for all this other stuff. All right, so now we can probably get, at least I hope we can get, maybe I have to cut it. Clip you out, clip you out. Okay. This bit of stuff, right, come on. Wish it doesn't want to come out. Trying to get it out without breaking it. All right, so this this is a plate. I mean, it's just a piece of tin, really. Nothing too fancy about it. When you hear uh, people talk about black plate tubes or whatever, that's just a coating that's on this metal that makes it resist a little bit more heat. It's not magic. It's just a plate. I mean, you could make that out of like a tuna can. It would work. No big deal. So then you've got hit this little bit right here. It's going to be hard for my camera to focus on it. Focus. This is a very fine wire wound around these two rods. This is the control grid. This is this part right here. This little dot this control grid is what you place your signal on and it regulates the flow, okay? Now this little bit right here uh, it's really hard to see, this little white thing it's covered with some gunk that's the cathode when this gets heated, that gunk basically some kind of special chemical coating that puts out electrons. So this gets heated, the electrons come off here, the chemical or the uh, control grid controls it, and the plate collects it, 
and that's what that's how tube works so let's talk about uh, some the getter flashing what is that so well, you can see it from the outside of the tube and it's decent uh, well if you see that the getter flashing is looking like I'm gonna show you then you can tell that your tubes are on the way out for sure there's a million other ways the tubes can fail and basically screw you up, but uh, this is a surefire way. If your tubes look like this, they're just about done, and you're lucky that they lasted this long. Okay, so this, these are two RCA 6550s. They're the same tubes. They're actually made by Tungsol, and these are nice and old from the 60s or 70s. I'm not sure. They have some date codes. Looks like it might be 1969 for this one and 1973 for this one, but they're basically the same thing. If you look inside, they're identical. Same structures, same plates, same uh, getters and micas and all that stuff. So anyway, this is a nice one that has barely been used, as you can see. The getter flashing, nice and silver. It's really not, it's barely even discolored along the edges. It's hard to see that on the camera. But you can see yourself in it. It looks beautiful. This is the same kind of tube, but as you can see, you can see right through that getter flashing. It's basically not even there. I don't know if it shows up on the camera too well. Okay, kind of like that, you can see. It's just a little bluish, brownish haze that's left in there. What the getter flashing does is as the tube ages, and no vacuum is totally perfect, some uh, air or some gases that are either left in there whenever from the factory or get you know get in over the years who knows how but they're absorbed by the getter flashing and the more gases it absorbs the weaker it gets it gets discolored okay and also from the heat and stuff in the tube when there is almost no flashing left all the absorbed gases have been kind of let back into the tube and the tube is what's known as gassy and that's bad. I mean, these are vacuum tubes for a reason. So if you have all this uh, non-inert gases like oxygen, carbon dioxide, whatever's in the atmosphere, and whatever was, you know, a byproduct of these materials that they made the tube out of, the getter absorbs it at the factory. But when the getter gets worn out like that, it releases it back into the tube, and then your tube will short out and die. And I can't believe this tube was actually still barely working and hasn't shorted out. They really made good tubes back then, but modern tubes like your Sobtex and stuff like that are not going to be that good. So anyway, just a little note about getter flashing.